spark of Christ. Now, on this day, we know that every baby that comes into the world, any one of them, might also be destined for greatness. It's the dawn of a new year, and the world is still unfolding, and God is still blessing, and hope can be born again at any time. Christ is born, yes, but violence continues, people still pass away, homes are still lost, and whatever got on your last nerve still does. Christmas, it has provided us with the problem of great expectations and sometimes even greater disappointments. And somehow it seems to promise so much, but deliver so little. The expectation of the new year is somehow things will change for the better. Somehow we will be better. Surely the world is destined for something more. Our text today, Luke tells us that eight days after the baby was born, he was circumcised and given the name Jesus, just as the angel had said. Then in verse 22, Luke apparently fast forwards to 40 days later when Mary and Joseph go to the temple. And while Mary and Joseph are in the temple, Simeon's dream comes true. Allow me to introduce you to that man the Bible calls Simeon. If there was ever somebody who exemplifies a man who was waiting on God, it is Simeon. We don't know a lot about him. He is not mentioned anywhere else in scripture, but we know in Luke 2 and the verse 25, he was waiting for Israel to be delivered, to have some deliverance. He is a temple priest, and he is called a very devout man. And he has been waiting on the favor of the Lord. And the children of Israel have suffered as a political volleyball, first from the Syrians and now to the Romans. They are in the midst of political unrest and strife. And Simeon and others like him had patiently waited on the Lord to deliver a true king to the people. Simeon had lived his entire life waiting on God to move just as God promised God would, knowing and believing that indeed destiny had to promise more than what they were experiencing. So Simeon waits for greatness to be born. Through the guerrilla fighting of the Maccabees, he waits on God. Through the political ups and downs of Jonathan and Jude, Simeon waits on God. Through the backstabbing and the political ambitious families, Simeon waits on God. Through the economic good times and bad times of the Jewish people, Simeon waits on God. So there's the story right there as we approach these first moments of 2019, somebody here is waiting on God to move and do just what God has promised to do for us. Simeon knew about being resolved, being determined. And Simeon knew that sometimes you have to just wait on God through all that you're going through. Note, the Bible says two things about Simeon. First, he was waiting for the grief of Israel to be relieved. He was waiting for the comfort and the relief and the consolation that only God can bring. And I believe there's somebody here that needs to understand what Simeon did. That the world can bring you some fame and some resources, but there are some things only God can bring to you. The world can give you answers, but God can lead you to truth. 
The world can give you military power and might, but only God can give you a savior. The world can give you advice, but God can give you direction. The world can give you a high, but only God can give you real joy. The world can give you a few moments of happiness, but God, only God can wrap God's arms around you eternally. Simeon is waiting for only what God can bring. Only God can show us another way. Only God can really liberate us and really reconcile us. Simeon here is waiting for God to send relief to a people ruled by an oppressive and cruel and corrupt government. I'm in the Bible. Simeon is waiting for God to send some support to those who have always been looked down upon. He's waiting for God to send some support to those people who are wrongly imprisoned. Waiting to send some support to those who struggle while their land is being taken away. Waiting for somebody to come who will oppose outrageous taxes. Maybe even to oppose putting more walls up. On this last Sunday of the year, yes, the Savior is born. But many of us are still waiting, just like Simeon, for the promise to be made manifest. The promise that trouble will last always. The promise that the Lord will make a way somehow. The promise that I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. The promise. But here's the good part about Simeon. He had the wisdom to know that the promise of God would come in a package so ordinary that most people would just overlook it. So when this devout man who has been waiting sees this ordinary baby born outside to a homeless couple, the mother of strange reputation, he looks and knows that this isn't just any baby. Although I'm sure Jesus looked like any other six-week-old baby, and we know the cuteness hasn't quite set yet at six weeks. <laughs> but God revealed to Simeon that this is the one. This, this child, this is the one we're waiting for, the Messiah. And I wonder how, how would he know? I mean, what did he sense when he looked upon the Christ child? It made me wonder, what would this world look like if every time we saw a newborn baby, the most ordinary baby of unspectacular parents, if we looked at that child and said, is this the one? What would happen if we thought it was even remotely possible that maybe even one inner city child or one child of a migrant worker or one child of an immigrant might be the one to redeem us, to show us another way? I mean, what would happen? If we looked in the face of someone from Humble Park, from Austin, and said, ah, that's the one. If we looked in the face of someone from Inglewood and thought, ah, that child, that, that could be the one. And so the surprise is that Simeon, in his old age, was the one who waits to see 
God's promise fulfilled. Through all the political unrest, through all the unjust laws, through all the corrupt politicians, he never stopped believing. He had faith that expected God is going to deliver. So I believe the real message of this season, the real power of this season is we are asked to believe and look in the faces of children and to believe that there is always been one born among us who can show us another way. <clears throat> believe that there will be one born among us who is not rich and famous, but is born among us who will stand to speak truth to power, that will heal people, that can turn those against us to stand with us. We celebrate a child is born. And somehow it seems the promise is so much and it delivers so little. Christ is born, yes. But violence continues, people pass away, homes are still lost, and whatever got on your last nerve still does. The expectation of the new year is somehow things will change for the better, that somehow we will be better, believing that the world has to be destined for something more. And here we are, where we were last year this time. And here, Simeon is here to tell us the good news is that God does deliver. And that God comes through very ordinary people. And in the sameness of our day and routine, God delivers. And those who recognize the gift of promise are the wise and faithful ones. Simeon lived his entire life waiting for God to move just as God said God would. And so he waited for greatness to be born. And the gift of recognition was so great that he told the Lord, I can leave the world, now I am complete. So people of God, we must be like Simeon and keep our hope on God so that our eyes and our ears and our hearts remain open to God's grace and surprises. <coughs> I ask you as the new year approaches, what is your response to all the corruption around us? I mean, this is the time we make our resolutions. What will we resolve to do? Will we keep looking for God? Will we keep praying to God for direction, for insight? Will we keep believing that indeed we can and will be saved? It is the dawn of a brand new year and the world is still unfolding. And God is still blessing. And hope can be born at any time. Emmanuel, Christ is with us. And so now every baby that comes into this world, every boy or girl born of a woman is no longer the same flesh and bone, but a spark of the promise of Christ. And any one of them can be destined for grace. Would you recognize them? Because it could be any one of them, any one of those poor children living on the margins. Would you know them if you saw them, that that might be the one? The world will not change unless we change it. And the promise of God can't be seen unless we're looking for it. So let us go into the new year with renewed vision, looking like Simeon for greatness, with a revitalized faith.
filled with hope. And let us grow with Christ, turning to face the world. Let us resolve to do something for the Lord. Let us resolve to keep looking and keep waiting with promise. Let us go into the new year with eyes and hearts wide open, looking for possibilities, looking for God's blessings in the lives of very ordinary people. Let us pray. Lord of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we praise you for all you have done. And if you don't do another thing, you have been good to us better than we have been to ourselves. We pray this day that our eyes may be open and that we may be counted among the faithful ones looking for the promise of God wrapped in ordinary flesh. Well, in you and the justice of God compel you. Go in peace.